It's April 11th in northern New Brunswick, and believe it or not, we actually had pretty much no snow left a little over a week ago, and then we got hit with just a huge dump of snow over two days. Before that happened, I had actually set up a frost fabric tunnel over one of my beds with the idea of eventually transplanting my different root vegetables which you've seen are quite big at this point so I was I was hoping to get them in the ground under the frost fabric and I'll put a picture up of what the tunnel looked like once I had been done putting it together I was hoping that there wouldn't be enough snow to cause any problems but there was and so after about a week of mild weather and melting snow here's what my tunnel looks like so as you can see it has collapsed I'm gonna have to wait until the snow completely finishes melting because it's quite wet so it's quite heavy but once it does I'll see if I can just prop it up I'm really hoping that it the weight of the snow didn't like bend my wire stakes too much but yeah that's that's what it looks like so I'm a little disappointed it does make me question how useful this frost fabric is going to be in future I mean how much season extension am I really going to get if I can't expect it to hold up to some snow I, I guess time will tell here's my garlic bed not seen anything popping up yet once the snow is completely melted I have to do some cleanup of my asparagus here which I didn't get to in the fall as well as those stalks of the sunchokes and here I've planted my brassicas Okay, it's April 14th. The sun is going down, but I just did some work in the garden and I want to one, run you through what it's looking like. So first off, I've got my onions and root vegetable seedlings out on the deck because it was above zero to, today. It wasn't particularly nice, I suppose, but you know, uh, plants need to be out in good and bad weather to be completely hardened off. And that is where we're gonna go down. My poor greenhouse is just falling apart. That's something that I hope to get fixed this summer. It's worse on this side. That is what a New Brunswick winter can do. Okay, so uh, last you saw this, this was collapsed. Good thing is that once the snow completely melted off, it did pop up a little bit it's, it's a little bit not as nice as it was before but it works well enough I'll take you guys back here to see the garlic patch because a few days ago this had nothing in it and now let's see if I can if you can see there's like little little spears just popping up that's very exciting to see over here um this was where there was a bunch of like dead comfrey and asparagus uh, that I hadn't cleaned up in the fall, so I've cleaned that up now. There was a bunch of dead sunchoke stalks here that, again, I didn't clean up in the fall, and I've cleaned it up now. This is my, you know, the beginning of my food forest. It's still very, very young and still very empty. But here's my blackberry bush. And this was, a, yeah, also there was a lot of like dead, basically growth that had fruit on it last year, which with blackberry bushes, uh, you want to get rid of the canes that fruited once they're done fruiting. So these are all one year old canes. And if I take you up close, Maybe you can see that there are some buds on it. So that's pretty exciting. And then my rhubarb is popping up. This is my bigger patch right here. And then there's a little smaller patch right here. So not a ton happening in the garden um, mid-April. 
just the part of living in northern New Brunswick, but we're starting to see signs of uh, things popping up, so that's really exciting. It's the evening of April 15th, and I've decided to get started um, transplanting some of my tomatoes, which are looking a little bit rough. I'm going to transplant them into these cups. I went to the dollar store and I found these. They're actually made out of like a plant plastic, so they will eventually degrade, but I'll definitely get a few years out of them at least. So I've got a few done here. And I figured I'll show you if you're not aware of why we want to transplant tomatoes into some of these really tall containers. It's because along the stem of the tomatoes, I don't know if you can see here these like little white nodules there along the stem. Uh, basically, these stems can, can send out more roots, especially if you bury them in soil, they will send out roots, which will then help the plant get a lot stronger. So that's what I'm going to do with these plants. I first start by putting just a little bit of dirt in the bottom, and then I kind of drop this in here and I'll sort of hold it by the stem a little bit to keep it in the center like that and uh, I'll have to put the camera down but with my other hand I'll just fill in the rest of the soil around this stem and there is the finished product see these how these leaves are not looking great I'm hoping that by transplanting them here and then also I'll give them some water with a little bit of fish fertilizer in them and I'm hoping that'll help them perk up a little bit. It's the evening of April 18th and I'm doing a bit of work in the garden. I started out by sifting some compost and putting some just on this end of this bed and then some below my trellis or a third of my trellis that's because I'm gonna put some climbing pea seeds here and then I have some bush pea seeds as well as some carrot seeds so half of this row is this Oregon sugar pod uh, snow pea and then the other half is this green beauty snow pea and I just kind of put the pee on the ground and then just like pushed it down and so now I'll just cover it and these uh, can be planted directly in the ground um, before a little average last frost which for us will probably be mid to late May I'll probably want to play it safe because every so often we do have a frost as late as June at least we've had it once before, so I'm going to play it by ear, keep an eye on the two-week forecast. So those are the snow peas. Uh, I only used a third of my 15-foot trellis because I'm going to do beans um, along the other two-thirds. These peas, although they can start earlier, they will probably still be producing when I want to go to plant beans. And so the peas that I'm going to plant here are these saber peas. And so these are actual shelling peas. So I decided to go about this uh, kind of lazy gardener way. And rather than doing like measured out rows, I'm just going to scatter them and, uh, you know, see, see what comes up. And as they come up, I'll just make some decisions about pruning some of them so that there aren't too many close together. But this is a bit of an experiment to see can I do this because certainly the easier I can make it on myself to do anything in the garden, the more likely I am to actually do it. So I'm just gonna like press them down a little bit and then brush some soil over them and then I put this little twig here to separate where I'm going to put the carrots. So here I just kind of scattered my 
carrot seeds. Try to make sure they weren't too close together, but definitely as they grow, I'll have to thin them out. But I planted these kitten-a red corn, or red core, cosmic purple, and then some scarlet nantes. So it's April 28th. It was really nice today, although I didn't wasn't able to get out until the late afternoon, unfortunately but I was able to set up, um, I've got some posts with some tin plates there to try and deter some of the deer that will start coming up once my plants start growing. I wanna kinda get them in early to try and establish that this is an undesirable place to go, but I also did do some planting, so I'll turn you around and show that. So I started by doing some more sifting of compost from my compost pile, put that in there, and then along the length of my bed. Here I planted cylinder beets, which are pretty cool with them being elongated like this as I slice them up into medallions. So those medallions will all roughly be the same size, which will be good for canning, I think. And then over here, I did some golden beets, which are just nice because they have a, a different taste. I think they're a little more tender, a little sweeter than, than red beets. Down the way, I did a couple greens. I did a rocky top lettuce mix a red romaine lettuce, a sorrel, and then a spinach. And I'm just about to water those in. And then I'm also, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to water the peas and the carrots that I planted a few days ago, because if you look at this soil, I don't think it, it does seem pretty dry. Well, actually, if you go down like a little bit, there is moisture, but I'm still going to spray it down a little bit and maybe put some boards along where the carrots are to try and encourage germination. So I still have more green seeds and uh, one more type of beet to plant this week. So it's April 30th. I didn't end up doing any gardening tonight because I just had some appointments, but I did pick up some stuff the other day that I figured I'll show you. It's a bunch of bags of seafood compost and then a couple of bags of black cedar mulch. The seafood compost is gonna be used for my potatoes, but I do need to get peat moss. And a lot of the garden centers in the area, unfortunately don't really carry a lot of product at this point in the year because not a lot of people plant anything at this point in the year. But uh, I got that stuff from Envirum, which actually just opened on Monday and I went on Monday and got it. They're a place that like specifically docks a lot of soil and mulch products. I am waiting for a shipment of my fruit trees. It says it's supposed to come by the end of the day today, but uh, I haven't seen them yet. So I'll probably just include those in the May video.